Hey, everybody, welcome to the Struggling Hunters. We're working hard every day on uh, trying to get better at hunting and uh, working through our successes and, and our failures and bringing them to you on this podcast. I'm Eric and I'm, I'm Joe. <laughs> and we are the Struggling Hunters. Struggling hunters. <laughs> I don't I don't know if it's worth trying to team up on that one or not. <laughs> well, I feel like at this time we've done it enough times we almost have to try to do it. <laughs> uh, we might have to get some type of a countdown so that way or you know <laughs> do it together or I, if it's I, even worth trying. <laughs> well, I feel like I feel like we've kind of messed it up so many times by now that uh that we just kind of go with it and and that's our intros, how bad we mess it up. I feel like we're, I don't know how many, how many podcasts we've been kind of working on this intro, <laughs> but we mess it up every time we do, <laughs> but anyways, we got a pretty fun podcast today. I think that, uh, it, um, it's going to be pretty packed with information and, uh, I'm pretty excited about getting into it, but first I do want to bring up one thing, uh, last week during, uh, last week's podcast. It was a special day and uh, I completely forgot to bring it up. And Joe being Mr. Humble, he wasn't going to bring it up, which would be kind of weird if you did actually, but it was Joe's birthday last week. And I, com <laughs> I completely forgot to, to say anything on the podcast. And I, and I carried this all week on my shoulders thinking about it and I felt so bad, but uh, uh, anyways, Joe, uh, a week late, but happy birthday. Why, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> and, uh, Hey, if you guys, if you guys, um, if you guys are listening to this on the YouTube, right, Joe, happy birthday, belated happy birthday, but still happy birthday. Um, did you have a pretty good birthday? Yeah, it was pretty good. It was, you know, of course had to work. Oh, and I think I'm going to start a tradition. Uh -oh. I'll put it out there now. So Utah has a late season turkey hunt. Yeah. And I think I want to make sure I always have a turkey tag. And then I'm not going to use it. And I'm going to take the day off and go turkey hunting. For your birthday. My birthday. That's a pretty good plan. I like that plan. So I just got to remember to do that next year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but yeah, it was, it was a good day. We uh, had to work. Um. See, we came home, got home, uh, went out to being COVID. You know, we, we didn't want to go eat, dine in anywhere to eat. and But there's this little uh, barbecue smokehouse thing that we, it's called Smoke and Bones. Um, we like their their food. So that's kind of, we kind of, <laughs> I know it does, it's not like, you know, some gourmet restaurant that's like fine dining that I go to for my <laughs> celebrate my birthday. It's a, you know, a smoke, smoke place, but <laughs> barbecue, but it's, it's the food I enjoy. So. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I would almost choose uh, I think I'd choose uh barbecue uh, over, over fine dining anytime. Yeah. So, I mean, I got, they were, I was hoping for some sausage, like little polar, these polar sausage things, but they were out. So I got my, <laughs> went a little big, did three choices of meat and doubled up on the brisket. So I got two servings of brisket and uh, pulled pork, smoked pulled pork, and then a thing of cornbread and uh, baked beans, but it was good. Nice, nice. Did you eat your cornbread? I ate my cornbread. <laughs> cool. <laughs> High protein, low carb. High protein, yeah, low carb. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad that. Uh, I'm glad they did that, man. That's crazy because um, you were hustling that day too. Because you still got on here and did the podcast. Yep. For for the record, I offered it to him. I said, "Hey, you don't have to do the podcast <laughs> since it's your birthday and all." And he's like, "No, let's do it. Let's get her done." So <laughs> that's but, how dedicated I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but happy birthday anyway even though that we're a week late well i told you i or i wished you happy birthday that day over text and everything but totally yeah. forgot to put it on the make a big deal about it on the podcast and like i said i held on to it for 
all week. I was like, I'm, I know I'm a week late, but I'm still going to bring it up. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. Yeah, Appreciate no problem. It. No problem. But uh, moving on from that, uh, a lot of people probably don't know this about Joe, but uh, he's, he uh, has a hobby on the side that he's kind of made into a uh, small business, a little side hustle, I guess, if you will. It's and been a uh, small, small side hustle. Yeah. Yeah. Lately. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and uh, Joe makes knives on the side. And uh, so today that's kind of what we're going to talk about is, is um, the process of making knives before we, before we get into the process of making knives, Joe, uh, my first question for you is what made you want to start making knives? <laughs> well, that, so start making knives. I've always been, I don't know if the typical boy, but you know, knives, have, I've been around, <laughs> I've been around knives my entire life. You know, I've always, I, I said, it sounds, you know, kind of cliche, I guess, but no, that's kind of the truth. Uh, shoot, since I was a kid, like, you know, before, before me and you met in middle school, before I moved to Idaho, I lived in Vegas. And, you know, here I am living, growing up in Vegas. Uh, I was, I was kind of still a country boy. You know, I, I part of it was probably somewhat my parents, but you know, my mom dressed me up in cowboy boots and cowboy hats, you know, so kind of always been that, I guess, in my life, but not that. So how did that influence me? I'm not entirely sure what am I getting at? I'm getting at that, like, from a young age, I've always had a knife. Um, even though I lived in the city. So I had this, this, I can't even remember what my first knife was, but I had this old timer, uh, sheath knife that I'd put on my belt and I'd wear around like you know I was I've been trying to rack my brain how old I was but you know if I try to work backwards moved to Idaho when I was 12 and was wearing a sheath knife on my belt a couple years before that so if I go back up a couple of years that puts me at 10 9 or 10 you know so I was running around with a, a sheath knife on my belt and then I got a little, um, and then I got a, a boot knife like thing, a little dagger uh, knife that had a clip <laughs> on it. So <laughs> I remember like I had a pair of cowboy boots and I tucked this, this clip knife thing <laughs> inside my cowboy boots and <laughs> go play out, out, out in the front yard. And I remember it was a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, school break, uh, summer break. And I don't remember what grade I was in, but uh, we went, we went bowling like the, my, like the, my mom's friends and her kids and our neighbor, couple neighborhood kids, we all went bowling. And uh, <laughs> the, one of the other moms took us bowling. My mom was going to meet us there, but I took my boots off to get into the bowling shoes and <laughs> out pops this big old like dagger, dagger knife on my boot. <laughs> and the mom like looks at me like, what the heck? <laughs> Did your mom know you have this? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so she took it and put it in her purse till my mom got there. But uh, but what I'm getting at is, you know, what got me making knives is I've always kind of been fatuated with knives a little bit and and uh you know a, a good looking knife is something I've always I've always looked at and admired and I was in scouts I think I was 15 16 years old and being now I'm in Idaho and there's a couple mills there in Kamii and one of the my scout masters scout leader he worked at one of the mills and so he'd get old planer blades and he bought brought those in and they were stainless steel so we had to have someone with a plasma cutter cut them for us and then we we worked them what we could and and uh, made it and then so that that kind of was like I always kept that in the back of my head you know I kind of want to get into this and so I still have that knife uh, and then fast forward to 
God, I think it was 12 years ago ish, maybe 10. I was working, or working with this kid, uh, Robert, and he was, he worked up at the, in the winter time, he would work up at the uh, ski resort here and uh, the summer. So in the summertime, he'd go up there off and on, but he found uh, an elk tine, a broken elk tine, like one of the, you know, I don't know which one it was, but he's like, Hey, I got this elk tine. Do you know how to make a knife? I want to, I want to use this, this broken tine as a, as a handle. And I was like, Oh, I've made one before. <laughs> and uh, I was like, well, I just, the biggest thing is we got to find a chunk of metal. And for whatever reason, I know, I think at the time you could buy, you know, just a knife blank off for even today, you can just buy a knife blank off of a uh, Amazon or eBay and just put a handle on it. But for whatever reason, I got this bug like, no, I'm going to, I'll make you one and I'll make it like, you know, from scratch metal and uh, talk to my wife's grandpa. And he had a couple of them handmade from a buddy of his that was a knife maker and uh, found out that he used uh, a leaf spring from like a Mack truck, from like a dump truck, 16 ton truck. And uh, I was like, oh, that's cool. That's, that's my thing was I was trying to find metal. And he's like, oh, I got a chunk of it if you want it. I was like, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> and so he he gave me this chunk of leaf spring off of a, you know, a Mack truck. And that thing is, you know, a half inch thick. <laughs> and so next, you know, I had to, well, now I got to work on it. So the wife let me buy an eight inch bench grinder. <laughs> so... I sat there and I ground on that thing for hours, just taking off metal because it was so thick, you know, and yeah. it, it wasn't the greatest design, but my buddy, I, you know, I, like I said, I, I worked on that. I don't know how many hours I did just grinding it down to make it, you know, so it wasn't such a big heavy duty knife <laughs> and uh, it wasn't the prettiest looking thing, but I, I don't know if I have pictures of it somewhere. But anyways, I, he, I gave it to him and he was tickled with it. And so that just kind of lit the fire to like, okay, let's get into this. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And, so, and now that, and that's kind of how I'll go ahead and like jump, answer another question. So the knife, my knife brand name is uh, Broken Antler. And that's where I guess the name, I, that's where the name came from was because my first or my second knife I made came from a broken antler so ah that's cool that's cool i was gonna i was gonna shout that out to is uh joe has a working website right now that uh is brokenantlerknives.com right correct yeah yeah so if you guys want to check that out uh we'll have a link in the description for you to check that out but uh but yeah it's a really i i really love uh the thought with uh the broken antler um i i i didn't know that it came from you kind of answered some questions that i didn't i was gonna ask <laughs> kinda, <laughs> kinda sorry answered. no no worries no worries but uh, uh we, we can go deeper into them <laughs> yeah but um but yeah well i was gonna ask you you know how did you come up with broken antler that was one of my questions but uh you kind of answered it, it took, already it took me a little bit to come up with broken antler because oh, I, really? I was yeah uh what else to you know i, I had i was going to just use my name um imes or joseph or manford my middle name and probably and then uh yeah like i had a couple others i just couldn't couldn't stick with and you know then i took me a couple of years to finally I was going to use broken broken horn was one of them I was going to go with but I was like eh, got into like the whole well a horn is what's on a cow antlers are what on or, or what on deer so it's you know if I well, I've used a broken horn off of a off an of elk you're like well <laughs> cows have horns so, <laughs> so then and then, so then it just kind of like, no, you know, broken, it's broken antler. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, th I think it really works. And, uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about, um, uh, 
about what comes of it. Cause I know, like I said, it's kind of just a side hustle as of right now, but it's something that because we've talked about it over the, over time and stuff is something that you want to take more serious down the road. And I'm excited to see yeah. what comes of it. As a matter of fact, you have a broken antler hat on. So I do people watching the YouTube channel, you can probably see his logo right there. Well, then I also have a couple hats to my, over my shoulder here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All these subliminal yeah, messages. <laughs> but, but yeah. yeah so that, oh, you go ahead. No, I was just going to say, it's pretty cool. Uh, uh, what you've kind of built. And I mean, I know it's just a side hustle, but it has a cool name. Um, the fact that they're they're custom made or or homemade custom made sounds better i think uh yeah not you know they're custom made i i mean i it just um I, it's a pretty cool little little operation um speaking of operation so you brought you you brought up the that you used a, a spring um what what other kind of metals or or materials that have you used and like to use to make a uh, knife knives uh so like one of the things you want to make sure you kind of have like a high carbon um metal and i and i'll be honest like i don't really know quite all the numbers and like you know i i have to i'll i'll get curious about something and i'll you know maybe find something that has a carbon content that i'm looking for but uh, one of the things that like, you know, that I've kind of come to kind of like is uh, I made a couple of them out of uh, cement cutting wheels. Mm. Um, and then uh, right now I'm playing with one. I don't, it's going to be interesting to see how it turns out though, but like a sawzall blade. Sawzall blade? Yeah. I'm going to I'm just that one I don't you know I, I don't know exactly the content of it so like the heat tempering and all that's going to be a little a little different to play with to understand but uh see what else do I have I used is that is that like a thinner is it a thinner blade or is it kind of like a well this one is is a little thinner and it's also you know like it has a little bit more spring to it there's you know, like I said, I've been fascinated with knives my whole life, and I probably should have a more of an understanding of everything that I do. But like little things I've picked up over the years and that, you know, maybe mean nothing to somebody else, but kind of has stuck to me. Is that at a like mountain man rendezvous thing back when I was a kid? And uh, this mountain man guy that was dressed up as a mountain man pulled out his his knife and uh and he goes you know a good knife has a little bit of flex to it and i was like oh that don't make any sense to me like you know all my knives are pretty rigid mm -hmm. and uh, he was like well you know like as a mountain man you got to be you know you 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 utilitarian or you got to be like able to adapt to be able to you know like carry something that is can be used for different applications and such, you know, and so that way, you know, you don't have to have carry 10 knives to do a job. You can just carry one knife that'll take care of it. What he was meaning by that is having that flex in the knife. And if you wanted to, and you know, not having a thick blade, but a thinner blade and then having that flex, it'll allow you to, if you're, you know, wanting to cut uh, something very thinly, you know, if you're, so for example, if you're tanning a hide, you know, like, yeah, you got to scrape the hide and you scrape off all the, all the fat and all the meat off of it. But if you just wanted to work one little area with that knife blade that had a little bit of flex to it, you could, you know, run it along the plane and just, just move it to how you, how you needed to, to apply it to cut off the piece of meat or the piece of fat, or maybe, you know, you're trying to skin or split a piece of leather and so, you know, having that flexibility and that thinner knife blade, it would allow you to have more of an, I guess, of a controlled cut. Yeah, and makes so, sense. So that's like with this idea with this uh, Sawzall blade is I'm 
kind of playing with that idea. Um, and then I got another one that I'm kind of curious how it's going to turn out is off of a pair of, uh, uh, <laughs> what do you call them? Clippers like to trim oh, the, back the trees. The shears? The, yeah, shears for uh, yeah bushes and stuff. Mm -hmm. I got one I'm making out of that. And like one of the things too, and then a lawnmower blade. I'm, I'm kind of curious on that one, uh, how that's going to turn out. Cause that's one of those things that people are always like, Oh, I got a lawnmower blade. I made one out of it, out of that. And, you know, and, uh, so I'm curious on that one. And then files, I made a couple of them out of old files. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. That's, yeah, but like you got, if you watch, you know, like I talked to carbon content and watching the sparks, it's all, you know, and watching how, if they like have like the, you know, I believe it's the little flare, like the spark will shoot out. Then if it has like a little flare coming off of a spark, like kind of like spreads out one spark and then it kind of opens up to a couple other coming off of it. That's kind of one of the indications that you want to look for then testing your metal to see if it'll be it has a, the right car, carbon content as you wanted gotcha that's like one of the things that you know like I, I haven't quite got into is true blacksmithing a knife you know quite pounding a knife out and um, using hammers to put it put it into shape I don't I don't have the setup for that just yet um, that's going to be a goal down the future down the line um, but I just, I enjoy now just, you know, cutting them out and shaping them by with my little bench grinder. Yeah. Well, um, I actually think that kind of brings a little bit of uniqueness to your, your blades um, as far as just using random metals, whether it's the, uh, the cement cutting wheels or, or, um, or the, the Sawzall blade. I mean, I think it kind of brings a certain uniqueness to, to your blades kind of, kind of gives it a whole nother story storyline than just uh, pounding it out blacksmithing, you know? Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I think it's kind of cool. Cause um, well, obviously we've kind of talked about this episode or bringing it up and, and uh, I asked you about that last week about you know it, whether you pounded them out and then you're like it kind of blew my mind whenever you're like i've i've used this this and this and i'm like really i that's amazing <laughs> so i can't imagine how long you were grinding on that spring <laughs> i ground for hours like i didn't know any better and then you know didn't have anybody else with tools that could really help me do anything else or yeah, I just sat there and just ground away at it. <laughs> well, knowing what you know now, it, uh, would you have taken a different approach? Yeah, like the one thing I've – so I guess I know I said I don't – I'm not quite set up for blacksmithing, but I got a little forge. If you go to the website, you'll see it's made out of a number 10 can. But uh, <laughs> uh, so my knives, I don't make them overly too big because – you know, I, I, I got to heat treat them and whatnot. So I use my little forge and I can't quite stick a big knife in them. But if I, one thing I'd want to do better or do different, if I were to use that again, I'm, and I've thought about it and I just haven't done it yet, but cut a, cut a smaller piece out and uh, um, pound out that leaf spring so that way maybe I'll, I'll i could thin it out a little bit more without i think that'll be quicker and easier than spending as much time as i s spent <laughs> grinding on that that knife yeah definitely that then that, that makes sense that's that makes sense to do that um yeah that's that's cool uh i guess my next question is is uh what kind of shape do you like to go for uh, when you're making a knife or do you, or does oh, it, does it change all the time? It used to change all the time back when I was first making them. Like I just would, 
get you know a blank piece of steel and i just would go to town just grind on it and tell i don't know like you know i'd make the curves go and and i was like oh, okay i like that and i've worked on a couple of them then i'm like okay this is that the shape that i'm going for um but anymore like i've kind of learned you know I, I try to make a knife that i would want to use and so you know the shapes kind of vary with that being said um but i my overall length of a knife kind of stays the same now like i try to go from a four and a half inch to a six inch blade mm. so you know i don't really like a knife with a blade much bigger than that so it's not you know like it's just you know it's just for me that's you know i don't like a big knife so I, i'm gonna make them for kind of how i like Unless right. someone asked for a certain size, then then I'd I'd do it, or maybe do it. <laughs> but so yeah, so I don't really, you know, have a. I've been trying to. I've been wanting to make the official uh, broken antler style of knife. You know, like what a broken antler knife would be would would look like. But I just haven't quite found. I guess the. I got a couple of looks that I don't like, but I just haven't quite been like, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I want to be. You know, <laughs> that's the look I want to go for every time, mostly because I like the uniqueness too. Right. Every right. knife is going to be different, but at the same time, it would be nice to be like, you know, no, this is, this is a broken antler knife. Right. Yeah, that's cool. So it has a lot of uniqueness to it. Yeah. And like, and I struggle, I don't know if it's good to admit this, but like I struggle with taking out all the imperfections, you know, like making it look like it came straight from a factory, you know, just all shiny, no grind marks on it. Um, you know, all the lines just straight and crisp. But, and it takes, you know, that's it's, it's it takes a good hand to be able to do that to where it looks coming out looking like you know it was factory made and punched or however they you know they decide to do it in the factories but i like just to leave you know somewhat of a uniqueness of the knife still in the knife right like some a couple of times you know making them from a file i'll buff out you know the all the file scrapings on it or and then just leave a little bit of the file maybe on top of it or along the side of it so that way the check marks of the file is is still there but you know it's still it's smooth it looks nice but yet it's not you know clean right as far as like highly it's highly polished but there's still marks on it i kind of like that concept though like i said i mean a custom knife i mean that's kind of what they kind of makes it more custom that way is basically every knife is going to be unique right like, I, think it, I think it's pretty cool one of the things i did too like i said i used the cement blade and the one side so cement blade has the diamond edge on it to cut the cement mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh on the back side of one of the knives like so the butt part of it i left part of that diamond I, I made sure there's no sharp edges but i left that on there sticking out a little bit so that way you kind of knew where the knives came from yeah yeah i think that's cool i mean it, it's a conversation piece you know somebody sees your knife and <laughs> what kind of knife is that oh this is a broken antler knife came from a <laughs> cement blade right <laughs> i mean i think that's pretty cool yeah and when I was first started, I was trying to, you know, just finding metal, whatever I could. And I don't know how great a metal they are. I haven't um, done much with them, but I still got them. But they, I found an, a piece of like a I beam, and I had my dad had a, has a torch, and I had him cut out like you know some blanks and in, roughly in the shape of what I wanted. And, um. And like I said, I don't think they're the greatest metal, but that's I kind of that's what that's what I use to learn off of to grind and make the make the designs. They don't, 
they don't look as good as they probably should be or whatnot, but I, they're, they're my practice ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Um, so whenever it comes to handles, uh, well, I have actually, I have a question. Um, so a couple years ago when we were hunting together, there was this pine cone on the ground and, uh, I watched you pick it up and, you know, I'm thinking, I'm like, why is he so infatuated with that pine cone? Right. And then uh, I asked you and you said, Oh, you know, you can make a handle out of that. Uh, I guess my first question is, is did you ever get around to making a handle out of that? No, I haven't, I haven't yet. but that's one of the, I, I got, I got an order, got a handful of orders now that I'm working on and, one of them I get you know like it's kind of one of those things like I kind of get I like it when people give me the creativity you know like but like and I've been inspired to uh I guess is a word is for one of them to try to make a pine cone handle gotcha so like I haven't yet but my plan is to maybe when the next four or five months throw one of these knives with this with the pine cone handle on it that'll be pretty sweet i can't wait to see that one me too <laughs> um well so staying with handles uh what i guess kind of go through the whole process of how you how you uh come up with the handle or or what what and and what's what's your favorite as far as what kind of handle you like to use um, I feel like that's kind of a trick question, uh, <laughs> as far as favorite goes, but, uh, well, so when I, when I'm trying to choose a handle, sometimes people have like an idea what they want, you know, a wood handle or, a, or antler handle or bone handle. Um, and a lot of that depends on on what type of a handle I'm gonna, or what type of a handle I left on the knife. Like if it's a, you know, a full, full tang handle where the knife, and you can see like, you know, the whole, whole chunk of metal from the, going around the handle and, you know, to the tip of the knife and to the butt of it, you know, the, the, the handle is more or less sandwiched onto the knife mm -hmm. or if I'm going to, um do a hidden tang handle or a hidden you know metal piece handle and that you know a lot of times it just it kind of depends because of what 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 that is like i liked i did a one with a bone just like a you know an old femur bone off of a cow or something and that turned out pretty cool looking i did that and it, I mean, it, it was just kind of neat. It was uh, the contrast to it. It was, it was white, you know, versus um, a wood looking color, or, you know, an, an antler. Right. But, you know, I, I, as far as favorite, you know, it, I have a hard time calling a favorite because like when I were really work on one and really get it to come out all polished and nice looking, you know, it kind of becomes my favorite at the time. <laughs> I probably should have a favorite, but, you know, I, but as far, if I'm going to go, you know, I like a, a, a antler handled knife just because I guess of hunting and stuff, you know, like it's just kind of represents that a little bit. So I kind of like that, I guess. So you know, if I was going to make me a knife, that's probably what I'd be considering putting on it is a, an antler. Can you, can you do the sandwich method with uh, an antler? Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can, you know, you can go through and cut it in half and then uh, sandwich it onto either side of the, of the, uh, of the handle or the tang there. I did one. It was kind of interesting. Uh, it was kind of a, you know, it had a hidden tang on it, but then before the antler 
went into the knife part of it. Like I, I allowed the knife to kind of recess into the handle or into the antler. And then the antler kind of went up around the side of the, of the knife. And then the, the rest of the knife went back into, into the antler. I kind of liked how that kind of turned out a little bit. Yeah. So, sounds, uh, sounds complex. <laughs> to, to, to a guy that doesn't know anything about making knives, it sounds that sounds a little complex. <laughs> it, it was a little bit, you know, at the heart, you know, trying to pay attention to the details of it, not getting caught up in how long it's taken sometimes is, you know, I guess the hard part of making a knife. Because right. you got to, you know, make sure everything you know, you don't over drill things and have gaps along, you know, where the knife is slipping through a piece of brass, um, you know, or, you know, making sure that we'll call it, we'll keep going off the sandwich part, just, you know, between the knife, there's no gaps between the wood and the metal or the piece of leather. And then the, you know, it'd be knife then leather, then a piece of wood that's sandwiched in between that, or when you're stacking them, you know, making sure that stuff is laying correctly and and not too many like, well, I guess I can live with that. Like I, you know, I like to leave character on the knife, but like I don't want it to be like, oh, there was an uh oh. <laughs> right. You know? Right. So um when uh what what do you use to cut a horn in half? Uh, so my shop is very, very basic. Uh, and I just have a hand. I, well, I got, I have a Sawzall now, but for the longest time, I just had a little like 12 inch blade wood, wood saw, a hand saw that I just did up, did it all by hand. <laughs> that had to have been a little interesting at times. Uh, my arms got tired a handful of times. I <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'd sit there and be like, why am I doing this? <laughs> sit down for a little bit, frustrated, you know, like, oh, dang it, it's taking me forever. And I'd get back up and go back to work on it. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's kind of amazing. I mean, so obviously you don't have, you know, all the, all the up-to-date. I mean, this is just your side project that you've been kind of accumulating more, more tools as you go along. And, and, um, but for you to be able to do what you've been creating with what you have. I mean, it's pretty creative in its, in its own right, I think. Yeah. And, you know, like when I first was getting into it, you know, I was not that I was beating myself up, but, you know, it was always like, Oh, you know, if I only had, you know, this type of a sanding platform, you know, or if I had a drill press, if I had a, uh what do they call them saws with the really thin blade with circular the, saw, oh uh, the band saw band saw stuff or you know like I, I can do so much better you know like it'd sure be nice not doing all this by hand but like in the end of the day like you know the 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 saws may help you cut quicker but like you're still doing a lot of hand work yeah for some of it you know like you're still you know as when I, like I said, when I was first getting into it, I thought there'd be, you know, shortcuts that you can kind of pick up while there's a handful of shortcuts, but overall, like if you want to do a good job, like you're still, still doing a lot of it by basic hand tools. Right. That makes sense. Um, I mean, you've definitely kind of went into detail about most of this, but I, um, as far as like, step one kind of take me through the process of of like the tools that you're using step one of of you know you got your disc or your file whatever you throw it on the counter and the the process of of kind of going through and making it a finished product product so first thing i do is you know i try to uh solve whatever, whatever it is i'm i'm going to be making from whatever i guess you want to call my uh my material that i'm making the knife out of uh coming up with a design on it 
then you know drawing the design out on that material and then i'll take my angle grinder and then cut that cut that chunk out to a rough shape and then i gotta go back in and make you know if i have any curves on it you know a disc angle grinder only uh can only cut straight lines more or less so if i have any you know like any drop points in it or you know any if I'm trying to take some away without grinding it, I got to go through and make a bunch of little cuts and come back through and cut the long, you know, the long ways along it to cut those little, little pieces out. I'm not doing a good enough job of explaining it. So, um, so at first I'm using my angle grinder and a marker. And then after I get it in a rough shape there, then I take it to, like I said, my bench grinder and then uh, and then I'm putting it into a, in that into a rough shape. And then one of the things I do too is I do what's called normalizing the metal. So I'll heat it up to its cherry red, the whole thing, and then and then I just let that cool. Okay. And that and that does two things from my under from my understanding. It uh, relieves the stress out of the metal. And it makes the metal soft, so it's easier to grind down. And then, you know, then if by making it soft and re re relieving the stress out of it, you don't have to worry about like hitting as you're grinding. Sometimes you'll uh, be grinding on it, and then like you'll get a stress fracture in in the metal because it got overheated while it was cutting. You know, if it, if it was a saw blade, you know, it's going to get hot. Friction causes it to get hot. And that's going to, depending on how that cools, it's going to be a little hard on, on, the, on the material. And then, so then I take that after it's cooled off, finish rough, roughing it in and go, then decide how I, and, you know, cut the blade, grind the blade into it. Um, by blade, I mean like the knife edge. And then... You know, I'll take a file back over top of that, make sure it's all, it's all laying, you know, the same, uh, <laughs> straight, not straightness is what I want to say, but making sure my lines flow, you know, any high spots or low spots are all becoming one even plane because, you know, my, my bench grinder has a curb to it. And it doesn't take up the whole width of the of the knife, and I'm doing it all all freehand. I don't have any jigs or anything that I'm holding up to the bench grinder to hold the knife. It's just me holding the knife, then lining it up onto the bench grinder. So I take my file, and get it all all the high spots, you know, to in low spots, trying to equalize it out as much as I can. And sometimes I don't take it all out because I leave it there for character. Um, and then by this time I'm choosing what, what type of handle I'm putting on there. So I'm prepping that, cutting that down, cutting the antler to size or the piece of wood to size, cutting out my leather pieces that I'm going to stack up on the handle. Um, you know, then I'll drill. If I, if I'm doing, I'll drill a couple holes in the handle side of it to allow for better adhesion. And then, uh, then at this point, I'm throwing it back in into my little forge to heat it back up and to keep it simple, get it red hot again to where it's no longer magnetized. It's kind of interesting when metal get red, when the metals get red hot, they no longer, I don't quite remember the right term, but it doesn't hold a magnet to it. Hmm. So that's what I roughly use for making sure it's at the right temperature. And then I put it in a room temperature, a little warm uh, oil to quench it. And that cools it really quick and that hardens the metal. And that's the interesting thing is, it's like, even though you do what's called hardening, it's still, it becomes like really brittle. Because so if you drop it at this point, you can, you can almost shatter it or put a crack into the blade. And sometimes even at this point, when you cool it off, it'll, it'll, you'll hear like a little dink and that's a crack in your blade. All right, so it cracked itself. Now, does that come from leaving it in just a hair too long? No, that's just a weak point in the metal. Oh, gotcha. 
or maybe or maybe yeah like you it overheated and didn't cool properly so or you know so you have a stress point in the middle and sometimes heating it up that hot and then cooling it that quick creates a stress fracture so if that happens in your projects your blade's um, no good so you got to start from scratch yeah because uh I've been. What's that show called? The uh, forged in me, in metal or forged, forged in fire? Forged in fire. Yeah, um, I've been watching that show, and sometimes if if they're not in the testing phase, um, they they can kind of fix it. Right. If you if it's in a spot that you can work it out, but they have to grind it out. That's what they have to do, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen that. I haven't watched that show in a little bit, so I'm trying to remember what they did. But, uh, so that's about the best you can do. If 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 worse comes to worse, you might be able to grind the grind the uh, crack out. But other right. than that, you'll have to start over. Right, and that's typically what I do is just start over. And then at that point, how many? Uh, how many? How many hours do you put in to that process? Um, to get to there, I can be anywhere from uh, two or three hours or, or so. Or maybe you know, the three is kind of pushing it. I mean, like I, I don't I'm <laughs> saying this, but like I don't push, push myself too hard. I enjoy doing this. And so you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be, I'll say now, you know, like I typically don't rush myself. So like, you know, if a knife is ordered, I'll try to, I try to get it done, but at the same time, I enjoy doing this. So right. this is, this isn't something I'm, you know, I'm really, really pushing myself at to, to crank stuff out. So you're not stressing out about it too much if you've, I mean, it, it sucks that you kind of lost two hours in one project, but if right. that happened, you wouldn't stress out about it much. Right. Like it's, it's hard because you're like, I got to start over, but you know, that's what, that's what you got to do to make the, make the knife. Right. So, right. So after that, I uh, do come in and finish tempering it and put it in the oven for, depending on the metal or, you know, a couple hours at a lower temperature and that, that softens the metal and makes it so where, you know, like it, you don't, um, if you were to drop it, it doesn't break or if you bend it a little bit, it doesn't snap. And, uh, and it allows you to put a, you know, to, to work an edge on it. And so when, when you're actually, when you heat treat it and you cool it real quick, you, it, you do if you've seen on the forged and fire where they'll run a file over it and if it just it's kind of inter crazy but like it, that file literally will like skate across it it won't mm -hmm. dig into it it's it's that hard and so that's you know check make sure that happens and then i come in and, and put it in the oven for a couple hours at a lower temperature depending on the metal and then that allows me to be able to put an edge on it and and uh, then I come back out, clean it up, and while while, it's, while all that's going on, I've been working on the handle, getting it into a little bit of shape, and then then I polish it up to uh, pretty much um, shiny if I want it shiny, and then or yeah, <laughs> and then start putting the handle on it, wrap the blade and tape or something so that way I don't scratch the blade up while. Um, put the handle on it and I'll some you know I've had a, handles have been kind of fun for me sometimes because I don't have a some sometimes I don't have quite the design I want for the handle so as I'm working on it I'll file it down and I'll if there's a kind of a neat spot in the wood you know I'll leave it at that point and work everything else around it you know then make sure it fits the hand afterwards but handles have been kind of fun sometimes just to to see what and that's and that's too my favorite part of 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 making the knife is finishing up is i guess <laughs> finishing up the handle 
you know, and everything is like coming together and it's just like, you're staring at it like, yeah, man, like <laughs> this is pretty cool. Yeah. You know, this, this chunk of wood and this chunk of metal have come together and it's clean, it's polished and yeah, it's, it's, it, it looks good. <laughs> yeah. But that I, I, I know personally, I, I mean, I don't make knives or anything obviously, but uh, just doing creative things that finish and prod product and and the 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 feeling you get afterwards is is pretty pretty uh fulfilling yeah. so i can only imagine doing a knife but yeah I'll just, I, I i'll never I'll, I'll just leave you to doing the knives right. it would be kind of yeah, cool to it would be kind of cool to have the the stuff and you know pound on metal and try to make something out of it I do want to do that at some point, you know, I want to get into that at some point, but it's just not, not just yet. Yeah. And then I do do this. I do, I do make the sheaths for them. I make them out of leather. Um, mm. Oh, so you do a I little leather out. work. Yeah. I don't, I don't do very much tool, uh, tooling, you know, design on the leather, but I dye the leather. I, uh, I, cut the leather i punched the punch the stitching holes out for the leather and and uh stitch it all up myself oh interesting yeah hmm. man you're <laughs> yeah you kind of go through the whole process i didn't i didn't know that i actually didn't know that you uh did the leather side of it too so that's pretty cool yeah and i enjoy that's something I hope to be able to do more of in, in later in life or, you know, a couple of years down the road is getting into leather tooling. I yeah. think that's, that's the fun little, little thing. Yeah. So, um, you, what, uh, what tool would you, what tool would you like to, or I guess what I'm getting at is, um, would you like a plasma cutter to make things a little easier for you? No, uh, if I was getting into more stainless steel stuff, a little hard to get a harder metal, a plasma cutter would be nice. I mean, I, I wouldn't, yeah, a plasma cutter would be nice anyways, because they're an awesome machine. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but if, you know, like my next, if I was going to upgrade and, you know, I wouldn't say dream, uh tool or whatnot but it'd be one of those bigger like uh, ban uh sorry not bandsaw but uh God, what do you call them now band sanders you know like they have like the big 72 oh, inch loop yeah sands. yeah oh so it's the sander that you'd like to upgrade yeah get away from my bench grinder and get get that because i i will I, the one thing i like about that is i can have a bigger bigger area that of a flatter area that I can run the knife on without having that curvature of the bench grinder. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it definitely but, makes shaping the knife a lot easier, huh? At some points, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, but and then, you know, it transfer over it that transfers over into uh for the handles too, to be able to sand the handles down that way. Cause I, you know, not that I'm complaining, but I got a big, a big wooden rasp, you know, that I use to, to take off all the, the big heavy meteor stuff. And then I, I actually, just, and then I have a little uh, like, you know, belt sander that's, you know, eight inch belt sander that I flip upside down and use that to work mm. my handle too. Yeah. But, um, um, so that, you know, you just eliminate a couple of tools was all, what all that would, would that would benefit me too and have another thing in my, in my hat. Yeah, I know that's, that's interesting to, to learn about the details of uh, how to make a knife. It's amazing how much, I mean, you, you definitely have to kind of love that stuff if, uh, to, to do that because i mean it is a process i mean how, how long how many hours do you think you put into one knife 
so you know, I'm roughly like f four hours and then getting into the sheath, you know, another couple hours there. So I'm, you know, six, I'd say anywhere from five to eight hours into a knife. Yeah, you definitely got to love, love doing it. To... <laughs> and I guess I, I could, if I probably sat down and just really focused on one knife, it'd probably take, you know, I, I could probably bust it out sooner, but I'm also doing two or three at a time. Right. To, you know, but like I said, I, I, I enjoy doing it. So I don't, I don't rush myself. I don't, I try not to put any like, you know, I should probably do it at one point, just be like, I'm going to sit down and actually see how long it, it'll take me to, <laughs> to crank one out. But, you know, working after work and then on the weekends, I, I try not to push myself to, to get it done just simply because I enjoy doing it and I don't have to. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think once you start trying to push yourself to get them out, it kind of loses a little bit of the, the love for it. I mean, you might still love doing it, but you know, it just kind of takes away the enjoyment of the creative pot process yeah. by pushing yourself. So, um, yeah, that's awesome. I, I, I think it's pretty neat it's pretty neat that you do it. Uh, I didn't realize. So your first knife was whenever you were 15, 16. Yeah. That's kind of what started it all. Huh? Yeah. That, that's what gave me like the, uh, well, I can figure, I can do this. Right. <laughs> Just got to put together a small amount of tools. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. That's really cool. Uh, I think, I think that's about all the questions I have. And yeah, I think, you know, that wraps it up pretty much from start to finish and why I've gotten into it. And, you know, I'll kind of maybe wrap it up with a motivational <laughs> thought on it all, <laughs> you know, just, just like us in life, you know, starting off as a blank, blank pieces of knife or of, of blanks not not molded into anything or shaped into anything you know taking grinders a lot of hard work knocking off the edges here and there and then your end product you know it's it's a a pretty piece of metal <laughs> just like yourself you know like you might be going through some hard times getting high edges knocked off or you know something heating you up warming you up and something else sanding you down you know you get through it push through it you can you'll you yourself will be a beautiful knife <laughs> <laughs> be a pretty piece of metal huh <laughs> exactly but but yeah so you know feel free to roll over check out the website you got a few things on there um you feel free to put messages on the youtube channel if you have any questions too um I'll be on, we'll both be on checking those. Uh, I have an Instagram, Broken Antler Knives. Um, there's some more pictures on that than uh, right now than on the website. So you can check that out too. I try to, um, Instagram, I try to do what my current project is. I try to post pictures on there, what I'm working on. So if you want to see, you know, I don't have all my knives on there, but I have a, the last few that I've kind of worked on. But, uh, but yeah, feel free to reach out, message me. We can work together. One of the things I want to get into, if you find a piece of wood while you're out hunting, uh, you know, or you want to make a handle out of it, you know, let's talk, let's figure it out. If you have a piece of metal or something you want in, let, you know, like put into the handle, if you had a piece of metal, you know, we can maybe look into figuring out how to put that as part of the knife make sure we have a good cutting edge on it I haven't done that yet but i'm willing to learn <laughs> if that makes any sense to anyone out there <laughs> um yeah yeah so uh uh on the website brokenantlerknives.com there's a section on there that is uh contact us or contact yeah uh 
that you can you can basically write Joe an email uh, whether you're interested in maybe having a knife made or um, or or like Joe said just just uh, questions but I wanted to kind of clarify that part and then also Instagram broken antler is it yeah. just broken antler on Instagram well, let me double check real quick I can't <laughs> I can't remember it was broken antler knives broken antler knives on Instagram yeah so so yeah check those out guys uh i mean it's pretty pretty interesting stuff and and the character that uh joe leaves on his knives i think i think it brings more of a conversation piece uh you know that that character alone just kind of makes every knife pretty unique um and I, i like that idea uh what you said you know if you find something out in the woods kind of help you know you and well like one of the things like for example i did is uh i took a a 30 30 shell (laughs) and and incorporate you know the the back side of that into you know into the handle so that way you know like there is you know a 30 30 shell in the handle that turned out kind of kind of neat kind of different so like you know we can look into into doing stuff you know if you're if you want to commemorate something, find a, I guess, broken antler, find a broken antler you want to handle out of it. You know, we can, we can do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think that's really cool that, I mean, you can incorporate stuff like that. Cause you know, that, that 30, 30 shell, uh, you know, you take your, your kid out or, or your friend or, you know, your family, whatever out, you know, one year and you get a hold of Joe and, you know, we'll just say with the kid, you know, Hey, my son, you know, shot his buck this year with the 30, 30, you know, can you put this into the bullet in well, the knife somewhere? I mean, that, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And that's like kind of how this one was. This is the first time that this person shot the, this 30, 30, they're just target shooting, but the first time that they shot the 30, 30. So yeah. that was the first, I believe it was a, they say, well, it was a first shell. So yeah no that's yeah. awesome i mean that really kind of kind of brings in the the memories and the you know i mean very sentimental and personal so that's that's True. cool so everybody uh that's listening to this you know remember uh broken antler knives.com we'll put a link in the bottom and uh check them out it's kind of just a uh you know a side hustle right now but you know, Joe, I know Joe's wanting to go in deeper well, in the future. And one of I should the let you yeah. speak for yourself on that, actually. No, I appreciate it. I just want to, you know, make sure that, you know, in closing here that, like I said, this is, I made my first knife when I was 15, but I've been not, cons- you know, I shouldn't say consistently, but I've been dabbling making knives. You know, I've sold a handful of them and Christmas presents, birthday presents, and, um, or I shouldn't say a handful, but, you know, <laughs> sold, sold them, sold a few of them. And, uh, but I've been doing it for about 10, 10, 15, no, not 15, at least 10 years, good 10 years. I've been dabbling in this. Yeah. So it's not like I've been doing it since yesterday, but, but, <laughs> <laughs> but with that being said, I still got a lot to learn. Still yeah. got, you know, and st- but I enjoy it. Yeah. Well, I think it's awesome. And we probably should have talked about this a long time ago, but I guess it's kind of just timing timings, everything. I don't think a lot of people that have, you know, that are listening to the struggling hunters podcast even knew that about you. So it's pretty, pretty unique, pretty cool, pretty exciting and, and uh, pretty fun, you know, uh, content and information. So it's cool to have you take us through the whole process of making a knife. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for allowing. Hopefully I, hopefully I didn't lose anybody. I was able to keep <laughs> it somewhat entertaining. I know it, I don't quite have the proper words all the time, but hopefully the point was well, made clear enough. <laughs> yeah. But I think, I think with that said though, like, I mean, you spoke pretty, pretty lame in terms to everybody, you know, 
you probably would have started losing us if you knew all the correct terminology and a lot of people would be like, I don't know what he's saying, but it sounds, it sounds sweet. <laughs> so <laughs> but yeah. yeah, that's all I got, Joe. Yeah. So that's all I got too. You know, the, you know, I, thanks for listening, guys. Give us a like, give us a subscribe if you haven't. And thanks for giving us your time. What do you you want to send us out, Eric? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, guys, kind of like Joe said, uh, thanks for uh, listening to the podcast. We appreciate it. We're trying to grow uh, every day, obviously. And, um, you know, we really appreciate all the support that you guys have given us. You know, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that follow button really helps us out. Um, and, and, you know, listening to this podcast doesn't cost you anything except your time. And, uh, the, you know, we want to grow, you know, if you could, uh, hit that share button, you know, send it over to a buddy that might like this podcast. Uh, it just helps us out, helps us grow. Uh, we're in that growing phase and that's where we're at. So, uh, again, appreciate your time. You know, we couldn't, we couldn't do this. We wouldn't do this without you. So we really appreciate you guys' time. Uh, with that said, guys, thanks for listening to the Struggling Hunters, and we'll catch you in the next one. See ya. Goodbye. <laughs>